All right. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to this edition of O365A. And uh, tonight we're going to be talking about some outbound calling restriction challenges with Operator Connect. And just a quick review, if you're doing uh, Microsoft Teams calling, you basically have three options to uh, integrate with the public phone system, commonly known as PSTN. You can go with the Microsoft calling plans, which you uh, procure numbers right from, from Microsoft and can do the calling through the Microsoft service. Or you can go direct routing, which you select a PSTN carrier and the Microsoft Teams call goes to the carrier uh, and out to the PSTN, likewise coming in. Or uh, a new option is Operator Connect, which is sort of an enhanced version of direct routing um, in which you select uh, one of several uh, certified Operator Connect operators and the management of the phone numbers uh, with that PST and car carrier is done right through Microsoft Teams. Um, so more and more people are starting to select Operator uh, Connect as, a, as an option. And uh, we covered that in episode 90, if uh, anyone wants to check that out more. But uh, what we're going to talk about tonight with Operator Connect is when you go to introduce calling restrictions for the outbound calling, mm -hmm. um, there's limited options. So we're going to walk through some scenarios and some workarounds uh, to address that problem. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael, why don't you uh, maybe expand on some of the scenarios? Yeah, I mean, I'm working with a lot of organizations or, or enterprises that are starting to evaluate and kind of jump into Operator Connect. And so this is, you know, typically they're moving from a, a traditional PBX that they've had for, for many years. And so kind of the, the first wave of, of activity is really doing your, your discovery, right? So assess what's, what you're doing today in your, your traditional PBX, build out your personas, and, and typically you'll, you'll find uh, uncover scenarios where you need to restrict the ability of groups of users to calling certain numbers. And so uh, if we think about that outbound dialing restriction, you know, maybe it's meeting rooms, maybe it's, you know, certain users, maybe it's executives having, you know, classes of services that are, are greater than, than other users. Uh, so when we think about those scenarios, uh, in the direct routing world, we had, you know, online voice routing policies, we had usages and routes to really control what is authorized from a calling perspective and what path they would take to the PSTN network. Some of those controls go away uh, when we think about something like Operator Connect where it's it's more turnkey, uh, like a Centrix type service. And so with that, uh, maybe we'll pass it to Dino to talk about some of the, the options we have. Yeah, thanks, Michael. So effectively, um, you know, if you're going down the path of Operator Connect and you do, you do Ultimately, you'll run into this uh, when you start deploying teams is you're like, oh, I've got a subset of my users that I, I don't want to be able to make uh, international calling. So what, what do we have options? Uh, what can we do there? So we have some options. Um, and effectively, uh, what I'm going to show you is something that's been around for a while, and that's the outbound calling restriction policies for audio conferencing and PSTN calls. So you can see here I'm sharing uh, just the, the docs page for this. And this really existed for calling plans, and it was, it's been around since the dawn of calling plans and allows you to control a couple of things. And that's um, how you want the dial-out capabilities for meetings um, to be controlled. And then just in general, what types of uh, calls in general you want the user to make. So that's all done with this uh, PowerShell command that grants CS dial-out policy. And, um, you know, we can set this at a global level to control outbound calling for all users or individual users. And you can see there's a number of different built-in defaults in here. And there's a number of them here. The default for any one tenant is going to be to basically allow everybody to dial out and to dial out internationally and uh, domestically. So without doing anything, you deploy Operator Connect. Um, with the majority of carriers that I've worked with, especially in Canada, um, there's there's going to be a, a, an issue you run into where you're, you just want to be able to restrict them. So you'll have to, you know, this is this is what I call a workaround for now. I think we've raised the feedback with Microsoft in terms of a, having that, you know, where the calling plan style um, 
control where you can just choose a domestic plan for those users or an international plan. So you don't have that with Operator Connect, so you'll have to apply this policy. So you know, I can quickly show you in uh, PowerShell here, and you can get a list of these same policies. And you can see all the different policies that were listed in the docs behind me. And if I scroll up, you can see that the global in my tenant, and this is all tenant defaults, will be international and domestic. So you can, you know, if I if I wanted to restrict a user, for example, just to be able to make domestic calls within Canada, then I could just kind of scroll down and find the domestic only uh, policy and apply that. So if I have a user that I wanted to apply um, this to, and in my case, I'm going to apply a policy to Andrew Todd and ABC.com, and the tag, the policy I'm going to apply is this dial out CPC and PSTN domestic. So allow them to dial out, and CPC is uh, cloud PSTN conferencing for those inquiring minds. So allow that comp dial out conferencing and allow PSTN domestic calling only. So you can see there's a bunch of different options in here, uh, but I want to restrict it to the, my local country. So once I apply this policy, you know, Andrew's immediately only going to be able to dial um, domestic calling in Canada. So Dino, for so I noticed that you're saying like domestic calling here is just for within Canada. So mm -hmm. does that mean that, that uh, operator connect domestic calling is different than the calling plans domestic calling? Like at least for us in North America, I know that they're uh, no, like domestic calling is uh, North American wide calling. I'm not sure about the operator connect one. Yeah, that's a great question, Hab. And it is different because with calling plans, domestic meant, at least in Canada and the US, you can call North America wide, which is what generally um, I'm going to say nine times out of 10, maybe 10 times out of 10. I can't remember the last customer that wanted it locked down. Generally, they, they're OK with calling within North America if you're in Canada or the US. However, the caveat to using this method that I'm showing you is it, is it locks Andrew down here to calling within Canada only. It would treat the US as an international call. And there is no way, there's, there's, there's nothing in this list that allows me to call North America right now. Um, so that, that is the difference and you've hit, hit the nail on the head. So a user in Canada that we apply this to, if I'm applying it to a US based user, it's based on the location that's set in the admin center. So if in admin.microsoft.com, if you set the user up as a Canadian user or a US user, then it will follow that country as domestic and everything else will be considered international. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, for sure. I just wanted to understand sort of the differences because you're meaning like domestic is like just local to the country that you're in, but like, you know, with experience, in calling plans, it's both. And even generally with a lot of like your carriers, if you were doing direct routing, you would get the ability to do like North American calling generally for, at least on the SIP trunking side of things, you know, a lot of the times it's included, right? Right. The same price, right? So that's a good thing. And then I noticed there on the audio conferencing page that, or this page here, there's zones. Um, uh, that you can define, I guess, right? Or zones that you can use. Is that strictly for the audio conferencing? Like you can specify a zone for outbound dialing, but, can, but you right. can't specify that for, for, for a user, right? Yeah, we looked at this in testing. I thought, okay, maybe I can, can I apply the, the, the zones? And if you look at the zone A countries, people are like, well, what are zone A countries? You can look at the list here, and here's the list of zone A countries. Um, for this policy, and it's quite a long list, and Canada and the US is in here, uh, and, and as well as a number of countries. So those, unfortunately, only apply to the CPC portion of it. So if I apply it, I can say, you know, users in the conference can dial out to zone eight countries and regions. And then you can set for the, for the actual PSTN calling only, like a, just a regular phone call, you have the regular option. So you've got PSTN International, PSTN Domestic, or PSTN disabled, you can outright turn off calling in this as well. So you need to be careful when you choose uh, these policies. So no, you can't use the zone A countries to, to deal with um, saying, well, I'm gonna, I want them all, I want users to be able to call countries in this list and that doesn't work that way. It's just for the dial out portion okay. or for conferences. 
Okay, so that makes sense. So it's just conferencing for the the zoning, and then the you know international, domestic, or whatever the tagging that you said in the other the other page for the user. But you you bring up a question that I have around the disabled uh, one, like where, like why would you use that? And then like, um, is there any restrictions or um, things that you can use with like with it? Like, does it allow for um, emergency calling or? You I mean, if you, so you can disable on both levers. So both on the, the conferencing part and the, the PSTN uh, straight calling part. And you may not want anybody to use dial out conferencing, for example. So you can disable on the dial out. And um, that's a common ask. Hey, I don't want anybody to be able to do dial out because it, it can be um, taken advantage of, let's say, um, from some users. Um, and then I guess um, if there was a scenario where you you wanted to just directly disable a user from making calls, maybe you would assign them an operator connect number. I mean, the other way to do it is just to remove, you can know, you know, remove their um, phone system license, for example, would, would obviously do that. But um, I haven't come across too many scenarios where you might disable it there, but obviously Microsoft provided that functionality for a reason. Uh, yeah, maybe you have a tenant. Um, that like common area phones or something like that might be, awesome. or like a like a phone. Yeah, the scenario, the scenario I've come across is, uh, you know, we need to allow outbound dialing to emergencies, but only emergency services. And so you can still give it a phone number through Operator Connect, so that if someone had to call back, they're able to, you know, get to that endpoint from a nine one one perspective or emergency calling perspective. And so that scenario disabled just allows emergency outbound and nothing else. Perfect. Yeah, so that that's uh, that that actually would be really good, right? Especially be the ability, you know, with the emergency services, we talked about that before, right? Where, you know, if you get hung up by, you know, for some reason, they have the the caller ID uh, of that particular phone that they can call back directly, right? Yeah, or if you have some like emergency phones just scattered in the you know the floor or in the stairwells or wherever the scenario you know manufacturing facility, you can have a phone that's just meant for emergency calling and not you know incurring international charges or anything like that. Hey, Dino, you're you're showing PowerShell. Is any of this available in the Microsoft Teams admin center? No, these policies uh, don't exist. Um, in the Teams Event Center. So that's another caveat. Um, if you're not um, PowerShell friendly, you're, you'll have to quickly learn these to be able to implement it. Um, the good news is you don't have to create anything because these, these built-in policies exist. Um, and that's a little another bit of feedback what we provided is, is hopefully we'll start to see that as a policy you can assign in the, in the Teams Event Center. So yeah, it's a good call out, Kurt. Yeah, and, and just PowerShell quickly, what, it is, Sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say quickly, what's the what's the end user experience if you're restricted from making a call? Is it just the the beep beep beep? You can't make it's, the call. <laughs> that's um, the user experience. Just gets the fast, busy sound and uh, okay. Well, don't, can't connect or something like that. Yeah, it's not a very. It it definitely doesn't give you a message saying you've been prevent. You know, you, your administrator has disabled this. I mean, that would be great. Here, um, but it, it just gives them the standard. It would be the same as if the call couldn't complete for another reason. And even on the commandlet, like you can't set anything to, no. to give any type of tone or something like that. Okay, cool. No, there's not. This is you're pretty much limited to this. You know, it's not. There's no not a very verbose uh, PowerShell. You just yeah, ran into policy. <laughs> um, you I can mean, the, see this. Uh, applied to the user obviously yeah the the get uh, powershell command line is is, is okay because it does break out the audio conferencing versus uh outbound calling so it's a little bit easier to read so it's like match your outbound calling that you're desiring and then match your audio conferencing and that's the policy you need to assign it's a little bit harder from the docs page because it like right. talks about the tagged uh identity and then in the description, Kai says, this is what it can do for audio conferencing. This is what it can do for calling plans. It's a little bit harder to right. read. So. Like I assigned dialout CPC and PSTN domestic. So um, if you find it in this list, uh, 
Perfect. Yeah, so yes, it's, it's right here. You can see, well, allow PSTN conferencing dialog type domestic only, and then allow PSTN outbound calling type domestic only. So I'm allowing this user to do dial out within Canada, and then I'm allowing them to call anywhere in Canada as well. So um, yeah, so this a little bit, Michael's right, it is easier to kind of get your head around it when you read it this way. So just find the one that makes the most sense for you. Um, and you can see here, you can do the disabling as well um, for both. So find the one that you need for each user and you can set them appropriately um, or or change your global, you know, to whatever makes the most sense for your organization. So again, choose carefully here because you will, once you apply this policy, it will be immediately impactful to users. And little little tip I always like with PowerShell when you have these commandlets with like a lot of output, you can pipe it to clip, which goes to the Windows clipboard, and then you can put it in your favorite editor and search or manipulate it, do what you need to. There, there also, if you right click the the top bar of the, the PowerShell window, there is a find you can do right in screen under edit. Yep. Or you can select everything and then you can just drag all the contents. I mean, there's a number of things in here. I just just copied everything into my clipboard and. Yeah. <laughs> Learn something new every day. <laughs> all right, I think that's a wrap. Any more uh, any more questions or comments? No, I think the the big thing here is you know think about the the personas that you're you know moving into Operator Connect. Make sure you're you're aligning with your your business requirements. And uh, Operator Connect does not mean that you get to avoid PowerShell because uh, some of these <laughs> scenarios may may flag the the need to go to PowerShell. Of course, if you're ever doing bulk management, uh, you're you're probably going to be doing it in PowerShell anyways. Well said, we'll leave it at that. So a uh, great episode. We really drilled into the, the operator connect uh, some of the restrictions and, and what to what to do about it. So thanks guys, good episode and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks. Yep, bye.